Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. For today's video, we're working on DIYs that are super trendy and viral that I've seen on Instagram. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I am constantly bookmarking things for DIY ideas and project ideas, but usually I don't get to them. They kind of just sit in my bookmarks and I kind of look at them wishing that I had time to do them. But today is finally that day and I can't wait to share with you guys because these projects are all so cute and I think you guys are gonna love them. I also want to give a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. You guys know that I've been taking Skillshare classes these past couple of months and we'll get into the class that I'm taking this month a little bit later on in this video but I also wanted to take this time to thank you guys for 90,000 subscribers that number is just so insane to me. It's been such an amazing journey to get here and I really couldn't have done it without your support. So thank you guys for watching every single week. I have so many exciting upcoming projects for this channel and where I wanna take it. And of course, I also have a makeover coming out this month. And if you guys can guess what space I'm doing next, please leave it in the comments down below. I am so excited to get started on it this week. So that'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks, but enough blabbing, let's go ahead and get started with the first project. Hello from VoiceOver Tina. For this first project, I'm using Jesmonite, and if you guys haven't watched my video on Jesmonite, I would highly recommend that you check it out to learn more about it, especially if you're not familiar with this medium. So to start, I'm measuring out 75 grams of the powder into a cup, and I'm using my little scale. And don't judge me, but I'm reusing my Taco Bell cup just because I like to save and reuse whatever single-use items I can for DIYs. Then in a separate cup, I'm measuring out 30 grams of our liquid base, and this is going to be a 2.5 to 1 ratio of powder to liquid. This is super important to keep in mind so that you get the best results possible, and I will also link this kit down below. At this point, you can color the liquid base, but I'm going to leave it white. Now I'm pouring my powder right into that liquid base, and I'm going to give it a good stir, and since this is just a small amount, it's easy to mix up until there are no clumps. So we're just gonna pour this right into a coaster mold and I'm actually gonna use this as a trinket dish just because there's a lip and that is perfect to use for jewelry. To make sure that we don't have any air bubbles, I'm gonna go ahead and take my time to tap the sides as well as lift the mold up so that the bubbles rise to the top and pop. All right, so we're gonna let this sit for about 30 to 45 minutes and since this is a coaster, it doesn't take too long to harden. All right, so now that it's hard enough, I'm gonna go ahead and demold it, and it comes out so perfectly, it is so satisfying. At this point, the jesmonite is actually not at 100% of its strength, so it's really easy for us to break, so I'm gonna go ahead and just bend it in half with my hands. I've seen this particular technique all over Instagram and TikTok where people break it in half, and I've been wanting to try this ever since I discovered jesmonite. All right, so we're gonna set that aside and mix up some epoxy resin. So you want equal parts of the hardener as well as the resin. So that's exactly what I'm measuring out with the lines on this cup. Then with a popsicle stick, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a really good stir. And you guys, I made a big mistake here. I forgot to put on gloves. So please be mindful of what you wear to protect yourself when working with epoxy resin. I highly suggest wearing gloves and a mask and as always have plenty of ventilation as well. This particular design I'm doing is inspired by Not So Design Co. So all credit goes to her. I'm not sure exactly what material she uses in her pieces. So it might be something different, but please check out her work and I will have it linked down below. So there are many ways that you can color epoxy resin, but I recently learned that you can use good old acrylic paint to add to it. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'm only going to add in a little bit just to create this beautiful brown color. I wanted it to be see-through, so I'm adding in the smallest amount, and I'm also going to give that a really good stir. All right, now that that's ready, we're going to go ahead and put our broken jesmonite piece back into the mold, and this is going to fit perfectly. And after that, I'm pouring in our colored epoxy resin, and this is going to give such a cool effect. And again, I'm tapping the sides until all the air bubbles are gone, and I let it harden overnight according to the directions on my epoxy. The next day, I went ahead and popped it out of the mold, and voila, we have our cute little trinket dish. This project was so much fun to do and I really enjoyed trying out this technique. I'm so glad that I finally got a chance to create a little dish for myself, especially seeing the rise in popularity of resin products. It's amazing that you can mix two types of resin together to create a stunning piece and honestly, the possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm interrupting voiceover Tina to talk to you guys about today's video sponsor, Skillshare. If you're not already familiar with Skillshare, which you guys probably are if you watch my channel, they are an online learning community with thousands of classes for creatives and learners at any skill level. For this month on Skillshare, I'm taking a class from a fellow YouTuber that I've been watching for years. Amanda Rachley, the bullet journal queen, has a class on there and it is so amazing. The class is called Art Journaling for Self-Care, three exercises for reflection and growth, and I think you guys would love it. I've actually been wanting to take this class for quite a while now and I'm so glad I did because I just learned so much from her and aside from their art related and lifestyle classes Skillshare is a great tool for any type of learner they have classes ranging from business to photography and even interior design and I love that Skillshare is constantly updating the library so you can always find something new every single month Premium membership is less than $10 a month with an annual subscription so you can explore their classes at an affordable price. And if you guys are interested in checking out Skillshare for yourself, make sure that you click on the link down below to get a free trial of their premium membership. I would highly recommend that you guys check them out. I honestly have been loving all the classes that I've taken so far, so if you're interested, make sure that you check them out. And with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next project. For this next project, I'm using these 12 inch dowel rods from Dollar Tree, and I also found this glass vase there. Step number one is just to cover the vase with the dowel rods, and I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue. And as I'm gluing these, I'm making sure that I press down on them before moving on to the next. This vase is a little bit shorter than the rods, but that is totally fine. This project can be done with any height as long as the dowels are longer than the vase. And this is one of those projects that I've seen on Instagram so many times and I've been meaning to make one. I think that fluted decor is just so in right now and this is just a super easy and affordable way to get the look for less. Luckily, all the dowels fit perfectly onto the vase and I used about six packages of the dowels, so this project is about $7 to make. Since some of the dowels vary in texture, I went ahead and smoothed out the edges and I'm just using a very fine grit sandpaper to get rid of it. Also, one trick for getting rid of those hot glue gun webs is to heat them with a hair dryer and this is super handy, especially when you're using this much hot glue for a project. You could totally stop the project here for a neutral wood look, but I wanted to add some color to it so I'm going to spray paint it with a matte clear coat first. I was afraid that the wood would soak up a lot of that color, so I wanted to create a barrier from the wood and the paint color, but this step is totally optional. I'm really having a moment with olive and sage green tones right now, so I'm using oregano by Restylium on this piece. I ended up giving this two coats, and you really want to be thorough here, especially since there's a lot of crevices, so you want to hit every single spot. This trendy DIY project is so simple but has a beautiful end result and I am loving the fluted decor trend right now. I definitely want to add more of it into my home and this is a great and inexpensive way to do it. I've actually been stocking up on dowels to create more fluted pieces so I hope you guys are ready to see more of this trend. I'm in the mood to paint today, so we're going to create a fun boho inspired painting. To start, I'm painting my canvas this gorgeous raw sienna color by Americana, and this is going to take about two coats to cover completely. My best tip for getting an even layer of paint is just to start off with a thin layer and feather out the edges. I did about two coats of paint on this entire canvas, and I absolutely love this color. While that was drying down, I went ahead and created a pale yellow color and I'm going to add some baking soda to it. For this mixture, I wanted it to be a tiny bit thicker than what I usually use on vases, so I added a bit more baking soda than usual. To start my design, I marked the middle of the canvas and then I went ahead and created a small upside down arch. Then I just filled it in with paint and this is going to be the center of the first shape. And after that, I just painted on some more used to surround it. You could totally freehand this because we want it to look very organic, but one helpful tip while doing this project is to use a ruler, and I like to use this as a guide to make sure that both ends of the arches are even across the top. And although I do want this to look abstract and organic, using a guide is going to help us create a more symmetrical design. 
And don't forget to wipe off your paintbrush every so often. The baking soda is going to build up a lot easier on your bristles, so it's important to clean it to ensure that the thickness of your stroke stays even throughout. And you'll see that after I get one layer of the paint down, I'm gonna go over it again just to add some thickness, which will also add to the texture. Once our first little upside down rainbow is done, I went ahead and just repeated that same process right underneath it. These shapes and the overall style of painting is super popular on Instagram right now. And by adding in some baking soda onto our paint, it's really gonna give us a nice contrast in the textures between the background and the foreground. I haven't done a painting like this in a while and I really love sharing painting projects with you guys because it requires minimal supplies and I think that wall art truly makes such a difference in your home. And even if you don't replicate the same design, using the baking soda technique is really gonna give you so much interest in texture so I think you should definitely try this out. To clean up some of the edges, I actually use a smaller brush with the paint color of the background and this is gonna give us a really nice clean look. The style of painting is super trendy right now and with just a couple of supplies and tricks, we're able to achieve this very graphic and boho look. I really love the subtle texture that the baking soda paint gives us and I totally wanna to try this on more paintings in the future. This painting would look so awesome in a gallery wall or even on paper as a framed piece of art. I hope you guys enjoy these tips and try it out for future projects in your home. I'm so glad that I checked those projects off of my DIY list and as always, let me know which one was your favorite. I hope this video inspires you guys to tackle some of those projects that you've been putting off. I'm definitely so happy that I did this because I love every single piece. And if you guys like them as well, make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. And shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are interested in checking them out for yourself and getting a free trial of their premium membership, make sure that you click on the link down below. Before signing off, I of course have to plug my Instagram here I post on there every single day and you guys tag me in all of your projects and they are so amazing. I will put a few on the screen here and even if you don't post on Instagram, if you guys wanna DM me your projects, I love seeing those as well. You guys seriously inspire me so much so thank you for sharing your talents with me and thank you for watching every single week and supporting this channel. That's it for me today. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.